next topic is being offered by Jimmy Davis and Christine Menzel, Professor of Chemistry and Professor of Biology at Union University. And their topic is Communicating Faith to Collegiate Non-Major Biology and Chemistry Students. I'm so happy to be here with you and uh, thank you for letting me speak to you. All right, uh, my name is Christine Menzel. Uh, my husband is Dr. Jimmy Davis, and we work uh, at Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. So our outline for the speech is, uh, where are we from? What do we teach? What's the inspiration for how we arrived at what we're doing? Uh, what are we doing to communicate faith and our future developments? Okay, and then... Jimmy will answer questions, okay? All right, so uh, we're a private Christian four-year coeducational school, and we offer the bachelor's and master's and doctoral degrees with about 3,000 uh, students. Uh, we teach, I teach the biology courses, non-majors, and Jimmy will talk, uh, well, he teaches the non-majors for chemistry. Uh, we teach, the science we teach is just the usual uh, scientific uh, topics. But what's important is that we want to consider the scientific information from Christian worldview. That's the thing. All right, uh, my students, I have dual enrollment uh, students, uh, and you can see that 16 week course, and I teach uh, web classes for adult students, accelerated classes. All right, the chemistry course, uh, is, uh, again, the uh, chemistry uh, science as taught elsewhere. But we want to, again, have the Christian worldview. Uh, just uh, FYI, uh, Jimmy has flipped his format, flipped classroom, as they call it. Okay, so uh, what's this uh, inspiration uh, that we that arrived us to work harder at uh, integrating faith and science? All right. Well, first of all, Union has uh, Union University, a very fine school, has a good, solid mission statement providing. Christ-centered education. All right, it is, um, another important thing is that in 2015, uh, we had a course development review, and we emphasize um, the objectives and topics and assessments. But in 2017, most importantly, there was a presentation that we heard uh, at this, you know, conference. Uh, it was in Golden, Colorado, by the way. It was wonderful. But this presentation, you'll hear, uh, you'll see a uh, reference to it in further slides. Okay. All right. Outcomes. All right. So uh, our inspiration set us to find better ways of relating science and faith. All right. So we uh, uh, had uh, a better statement of objectives relating scientific knowledge to students' Christian faith. We moved from an ad hoc comments ad hoc comments in our classes, because of course we're a Christian school. Of course we're interested in 
expressing our faith in class. But we decided that we needed more uh, planned introduction. So we added the uh, overall Bible verse for the course. course. We added a Bible verse for each section activity. And uh, we developed a really cool uh, science and faith lecture, which you're going to see a few parts of. Okay, so this is what's going to follow. We're going to first talk about the science and faith lecture. It has reflective questions for the students uh, after this lecture uh, that we give to the students. And then secondly, the scripture verse associated with the class activities, uh, we'll, we'll just show um, a, for brevity you know, a quick example. Okay, so we got the four parts to the lecture. So this first little section concerns the, the lecture we developed. And um, part one uh, uh, is going to try to guide the students to see relationship between science and faith. And then we'll look at the others also. This is a graphic that I that uh, we hope you'll enjoy. That it it, it 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 tries to make this subject easier to understand. So on the left we have science and what it's about, and then on the right we have faith. All right, and in the middle you'll see that arrow going back. Uh, and this one goes this way, and then the other one, next one will go the other way. Okay, so science, what is science about? It's science about, it's about discoveries from data-driven work, observations and uh, observational or experimental work, and the outcome is functionality. We learn more about the functions of processes, complexity, we learn about the beauty of the world, then when you go to the faith side, we study the scripture. We learn uh, from the scripture revelation, and we learn from our personal experiences and our ultimate beliefs from the word of God as a creator, a designer, a savior. The arrow in this slide points that way, okay? And... The point we're trying to show the students is that we're trying to, from science, give them insights, insights to their faith. All right. This slide shows the same thing about science and faith, but the arrow goes the other way. Oh, science needs to learn. It, it provides... Um, Faith teaches us principles to evaluate ethical issues. Uh, I'm in biology, Jimmy in chemistry, and I, I do use this slide a lot. All right, here's an example. All right, now this is from the chemistry course. Okay. You know, the, in the chemistry, they talk about light, electromagnetic radiation and the different types of light from radio to gamma rays. And um, can there be any insight for the student into the world, world the scriptural word? All right, for example, can this information in science give the student more insight to the Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. Well, the student might write, okay, uh, light is more than visible light. So what type of light are you? Are you radio waves that communicate the gospel? 
Are you infrared that warms the world, makes, you know, helps with relationships? Are you x-rays that penetrate to the truth? You may be all of them. So, now the other way, arrow pointing the other way, we have the student think about, okay, uh, use scripture verses to evaluate ethics. Um, in biology, for example, we talk about CRISPR technology. And I bet all you biologists know, you know, we got some issues, especially modifying genes in embryos. And so students um, use these scripture verses, uh, possibly 127 Genesis, and uh, can talk more to the issue. Okay. Uh, now we're back to the next part. In our lecture, and we're talking about the lecture part now, that first week that we give, uh, that have the course open. All right. We want to make sure the student understands that our physical explanations are not going to exclude God. It's a difficult concept, I believe, for many students. Faith is required to conclude that God is involved. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So uh, we, we want to, uh, you, there's action needed by students, such as thought and study of scripture to see this relationship. And, um, uh, this, we, we, we emphasize the study of the science should not lead to disavowing one's faith, okay? And we try to help through careful questioning. All right, another point uh, you saw on this slide, the graphic, is the beauty, is a, you know, looking at the beauty in nature. Um, uh, we, we, we think that beauty, or we suggest that beauty in nature is enhanced by scientific understanding. The world is beautiful to look at, but it is even more beautiful to understand. That's uh, a quote from Brian Cox. All right. So um, some students we find in their writings have a problem with this because of prior studies or because of their current circumstances, and so they may have trouble seeing the beauty. But we try to encourage uh, this amazement in scientific, uh, our scientific studies so that uh, we can have, have, so they can see the glory of God. Okay, here are the reflective questions, okay, that um, we have at the end of the lecture. And you can read them, and I think because of time, we'll only do number four. What is your explanation of the relationship between science and faith? And let's just see what they say after going through the slides. Okay, uh, here is uh, two examples. I've always struggled between the relationship of science and faith. God is not necessary to understand science of something, but faith ties in why it is like it is and why God created things to be. Or the second one, like I heard it perfectly put in class. The relationship between science and faith is centered around the word and, not or, which I think some students come away with, you know, in some classes. 
Okay. All right, now um, we'll go on to the weekly or the uh, scripture verses, just talking just a little bit about that. Scripture verses associated with a particular class activity. For example, in uh, Dr. Davis's class, he might talk about acid and bases. And he might say, okay, how... Uh, does, he gives a verse, James 3, 11. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? And the student might think about this and say, we relate, in fact, this is an example from his class. We relate to the Bible verse because it discusses two properties of acids and bases respectively, sweetness and bitterness. It is cool to see how God utilizes even the most specific properties of compounds and relates it back to our faith. Getting them to think. And um, the scripture verse, now here's from my class. All right, we uh, topic by diversity and its importance. So of course I love this verse, um, Genesis 128. Um, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Here's the one response. We should care for what God has entrusted in our care. As God's representatives, human beings are to rule over every living thing on earth these commands, though, are, however, a mandate not to exploit the earth and its creatures to satisfy human greed. Okay, and when, you know, we, Jimmy and I are always thinking about what have we learned? All right. We found that some students underestimate the limitations of science. Okay. Bullet point two. Even though students have had previous science courses, many students still do not understand terms such as data, hypothesis, theory, law, experimental, and observational design. All right. So um, then we have problems with writing. Some students do not display clarity of thought, critical thinking in science and faith and uh, in, their, in their analysis. For example, in some of my classes, their, their uh, responses, when I give them a verse, it's like they just reverse the words sometimes. So I just got to uh, do more here. And um, these activities, though, um, help some students to use their faith to integrate the findings of science into their lives. I have had students write and say thank you for this work. All right, it has made us more conscious of ways to relate science concepts to faith concepts. So, of course, we want to go and improve things. And so, um, uh, these bullet points improve our science process discussions so that students can better understand differences in faith and science. Give more guidance for comments about Bible verses. I'll certainly do that. And perhaps add some sort of end of term assessment to measure changes in students' thoughts about reflective questions concerning faith and science. And uh, we'd like to apply these courses for the science majors, not just the non-majors. Uh, so questions. And at the end here, we had a nice further readings, if you like. Thank you very much. Okay, who has questions? Here we go. So in, in, this is me here. 
in, in terms of the student responses, you've given some very positive responses. What kind of negative responses have you gotten to this, as well as what have been the responses to, say, parents or from parents and from donors, because it is a private university? Just curious to see what the reception has been across the board. Well, I have, I have in my class uh, parents who want to see the syllabus and all that. And in the syllabus, I give them uh, in the, week, the weeks, you know, and I say, you know, what the scripture verse will be about. And I believe they like that. But a negative response. So far, we've had really good response, I believe. Uh, even in the dual enrollment, where the parents have more um, control, you know, because they're younger, 17. That. Any other? Anybody? Uh, any other comments for that answer? Oh. I would. I would follow up on that. We, I haven't had any response from or any comments from any faculty or or donors. I mean, the type of institution that we teach at, the expectation is you're gonna do something like this, it's, they don't tell you what. Uh, and so it, the, it, so far it's been a positive experience, yes. Uh, we were selective in the comments that we picked. And, but in rather than, we, we haven't got any negative comments, we've just got some uh, lazy comments, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Another question? Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I wondered what you do to pull other faculty into this type of teaching in their coursework. Uh, we are we are beginning to to uh, bring other faculty into this. Uh, for example, one of our goals for the future was to uh, apply it to major courses, and so I teach, besides this course, I teach an organic lab, and I've convinced the other two people who are teaching that lab to use this process this fall. And so that's our big test. Hi there, thank you for your talk. Thank um, you. I'm a new professor um, at a, well, summertime professor at Osable, and um, we also want to integrate um, faith in the technical expertise. These are actual like science majors, right? Ecology, environmental science majors. Um, but one thing that I think about even when I was a, an undergrad myself is that um, like the Christian faith was still kind of something that I was, you know, as I reflect on nature, it's still like, well, how do we know it's this God? So like what kind of, I don't know, what have you experienced with students where they could, as they're observing the creation through this subject matter, that they're able to still feel confident that it is that is it is the God of the Bible that they are also seeing, and not just some deity um, in general. Um, that's an excellent question, uh, but for the type of students that we have at Union. I don't think that issue would ever arise. Um, they're all, 99% of them are Christian. They're not really addressing the issue of, uh, are there other deities there? So, yeah, you have a very valid question that I could see in different institutions, different environments, that that could be a, a valid question that would you, you would have to deal with, but. I guess fortunately we haven't. Uh, but we want to prevent them, you know, how many stories have you heard about people, you know, as they study science becoming, dis you know, engaged yeah. from a faith? And we don't want that. We want to be very encouraging, you know. It's a wonderful thing we have. Okay, let's thank our speakers for this session. Express our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you.